Welcome to Enrichment with the Gifted Guy. The skill that we're going to be working on today is how you juggle. Uh, and you may ask yourself, how is this enrichment? Uh, how is learning how to juggle balls any form of enrichment? And so I'm going to make a, an argument here for five reasons why juggling is actually something that will definitely enrich you. First thing is that um, it, it actually studies have shown that juggling actually grows your brain. You're using certain parts of your brain as you're doing juggling, um, and it, uh, it it gets your brain active. And so, as a result, you're going to be growing brain cells rather than watching like videos on YouTube like this and killing your brain cells. So, uh, this is going to keep you active. This is going to uh, make it so that you are using the pistons and, and the neurons in your brains that you need to be using to to keep it going. The second reason why learning how to juggle would be a good thing, enriching, is that it helps with focus. The whole idea of juggling is that you are having to focus on the balls as they are in the air in order to catch them, and this is increasing your focus. So it's getting you to to, to pay attention to something, and because if you lose your focus when you're juggling, uh, that's when bad things happen. So you, you definitely have to learn to keep your focus if you're going to be successful in juggling. The third reason why juggling is enrichment is that it works on your hand-eye coordination. Because you are using both hands, you're throwing balls in the air, you're catching, you're throwing, that's all hand-eye coordination. You have to uh, be able to you know, have decent hand-eye coordination in order to ac accomplish that task. And that's what juggling teaches you to do. The fourth reason why it, it, it would be considered enrichment is because it teaches you how to learn. Let's, uh, you know, whenever you learn anything, you have to break it down. So I can't just say to you, start juggling three balls. I'm going to break it down for you. You're going to learn step by step how to do it. And that's how learning works, no matter what it is you're learning, is that you have to break it down and learn it piece by piece before you can accomplish the final task. Uh, you, if you want to be an artist, you can't just paint a picture. You have to develop your skill over years and years and years, trying different things and starting simple and getting more complex until you get to that point. And that's when you're learning anything, that's the process you're going through. And so you're using the process of learning um, when you're learning how to juggle. Uh, the last thing is it teaches you grit. Uh, grit is another name uh, for perseverance, which means when you fail at something, you don't give up. You keep trying. And when you learn to juggle, there is a lot of failure. Uh, but that failure is good. You learn from that. You uh, you know you understand what not to do the next time or what gets you into trouble when you're doing it. Uh, so the reason why I think uh, juggling would be a really good enrichment tool is that it helps you understand that failure is okay. It's part of the process, and uh, by failing, by no means means or you know results and you not being able to do something. It just means you have to figure out a way to push past that and to, to gain perseverance and to gain grit. So those are, are five uh, really good reasons why you should juggle. The sixth, and it's not necessarily as academic, is it's fun. Uh, learning how to juggle is fun and entertaining. And once you learn how to do it, I, I learned to do it when I was, I think I was 10 years old. Um, and once you learn how to do it and you get the hang of it, it's like riding a bike. You can do it um, pretty much, you know, as long as you, you keep up with it and you practice and you can try new things and you can challenge yourself. And um, so juggling is fun. It's fun. And that's another good reason to do it. So learning how to juggle breaks down into five steps. And the idea behind these steps is that you work on them until you've mastered one of these steps and then you move on to the next. So if you're doing step one and you haven't quite got the hang of it, you should not move on to step two. It would be like doing a math problem where you don't understand a certain concept and just trying to do a, another math problem that builds on that. That would be very difficult. So juggling is that the same concept, is that you have to master each skill. So different people will learn at different paces. So there may be some people who are fairly coordinated and they'll pick up on this like that and they'll, they'll, they'll get the skill. There are other people that maybe need to work on the skill a little bit longer and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you move at the pace that works best for you. If you're going to learn to juggle, the materials you'll need are just three balls. I prefer to use tennis balls uh, for a couple reasons. First off, you can hit yourself. It doesn't hurt. You can drop it on the ground and it doesn't break anything. Um, and so tennis balls are fairly, um, 
easy to work with. They, they all weigh, they weigh a pretty light weight. They're all pretty rounded, so they're easy to handle. Um, and so uh, tennis balls are a really good way to learn training. And then the better you get, you can add in other things. You can add in a golf ball, a softball, a basketball, whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be balls. They can be, you know, scarves and knives and chainsaws. But before we get to the chainsaw part, uh, let's get the basic skills of juggling first. So what I'm going to do with two of these balls, I'm, I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them aside. The first um, step to this is just the simple act of being able to catch the ball in the same hand that you threw it with. So how this begins is you have the, the ball and I'm, I'm seated. You could do this standing up if you wanted to. Um, it help, You can move around a little bit more, but seating actually helps me, help, causes me to have to focus a little bit more and it's working on my focus, so I, I like to do it uh, as I'm seated. So I take this ball and have it about, you know, at my chest level, and what I'm going to do is throw this up a little bit above my head and catch it in the same hand. So just like this. Real simple, right? Now if I do it and I can't catch the ball, I'm throwing it too far away. Or if I throw it up really high, that that makes it more difficult. So you just want to throw it just a little bit above your eyesight, a little, a little bit above your head, and catch it with the same hand. I, I, if you get good at this, you should be able to throw it up and not move your hand, and it lands in the same hand. Uh, that's when you get kind of. That's what you kind of want to do. Is you want, don't want to have to have to, you know, work around and try to, to catch the balls all over the place because that's when it gets more difficult. So get in the habit of just throwing the ball up and catching it in the same hand. Over and over and over. And what I would recommend, how you can determine mastery is, is you can decide that for yourself whether you've got something or not. But a rule of thumb of what I would do is if you can throw it up and catch it a hundred times without dropping it, then you have mastered it. You have developed what is called a habit and, and that you, you can do that skill pretty easily and you can do it pretty consistently. So that's step one. Step two is then taking that same ball, one ball only, and throwing it up and catching in the other hand. Uh, we tend, we are, are as a race, we are uh, hand dominant. In other words, we have right-handed people, we have left-handed people. So some people catch really good with their right hand and not with their left or vice versa. Uh, so you want to get good at catching with both because you'll need both your hands in order to juggle. So the idea here is you're throwing the ball around the same height, but instead of going straight up, you're kind of going at an angle and throwing in the other hand. And you catch it in the other hand. So you just do that back and forth, back and forth. And you notice how I have to watch that ball to catch it. And that's working on your focus. That's working on your hand-eye coordination. But I'm throwing that ball back and forth. And I don't want to throw it way over because uh, that would make it very difficult. Um, so you're just getting the habit of trying to make it so you don't have to move. If you look at my shoulders, they're not going to move side to side at all because I'm throwing the ball at a, a decent uh, distance between me. If I have to go over here or over here and I'm moving my shoulders a lot, then that, that's going to make things more difficult. So again, you determine for yourself whether you have mastered this skill or not. But a good rule of thumb is that you do, can do it a hundred times, back and forth, without any problem. And you, one hand is going to be better than another, but you'll develop that other hand into catching really well. Uh, by doing this. So that is the second step. So now we move on to our third step. And if you haven't mastered that second step yet, just go ahead and pause this video and work on that and work on that. And then when you're, you think you have it mastered, you can come back to the video, unpause it, and then work on the next step. But you should not move forward to the next step unless you've mastered the first step or the second step or the steps, the steps right before the other step. So now that I have, in my third step, I'm going to add a second ball. The idea here is that I'm going to throw one ball up and the, then the other one up too, and I'm going to catch it in the other hand. So if I throw the start this ball in my right hand and I throw it up, I'm going to catch it in my left hand. If I throw this ball started in my left hand, I'm going to throw it up and I'm going to catch it in my right hand. So you cannot throw the balls at the exact same time. If you do, they'll hit one another. So you have to pause just momentarily and wait for the other ball to start to, to, to kind of clear the arc and start to drop before you throw the other one kind of past it. So it looks like this. I throw that up and I'm catching the other ball in the other hand. 
and you want to get consistent at this. Didn't see how I wasn't consistent with it? That's because I lost my focus. I wasn't paying attention. And again, that's why this develops your focus is because if you lose focus, if you don't, don't pay attention, if you lose your focus, it's easy for a ball to get away from you. And then you just learn from that mistake. So I learned I need to focus. Instead of looking at the camera, I need to look at, at the tennis balls that I'm using. Um, and so you just do this back and forth, back and forth. And you try to get so it's not so wild. Because one, you'll be good at throwing with one hand, but maybe not the other. So going back to that uh, first step, you might want to try both sides of your, so try the left hand and try the right hand. So you, you want to try both of those in order to develop that because one will be better than the other, but you want to get them about the same. So again, step three, you're just throwing those balls up. This goes up, this goes past it. Now you could start with your left and then go right. It's up to you how you want to do it. But usually, whatever hand is dominant, you'd start with your right hand. If you're right-handed, you start with your left hand. If you're left-handed, so that leads us up to our um, fourth step when it comes to juggling, which is then adding in a third ball. So what this looks like is you'll start with two two tennis balls in one hand and the third ball in the your other hand. And what you're gonna this is all you're gonna do is you're gonna throw it up and try to catch it so that you can catch two, you can catch it. So that you can have two balls in your hand at a time. So, and that, that's going to take some coordination because you have to, holding two tennis balls can be really difficult as compared to one. So you just want to get into that habit of throwing it up and catching it so you can have two balls in the, in the, the hand at the same time. Now, the thing about it is if you're actually juggling, you will never have more than one ball in, in your hand at a time because you're throwing them one after another. But at the end of the juggling, you catch the balls. And so you want to get used to that habit of catching that. So work on that, work on, try to get a hundred times of doing that back and forth. And so you really get the, the hang of doing that. You get the skill of doing that. So then this leads into our fifth and final step for how to juggle, how basic juggling looks like. So <clears throat> I could start in my, with my left hand, the second ball, to my, I'm going to start in my right hand because I'm right hand dominant and it's easy, and it would be, be have it better for me and have an easier time. So what this looks like is I start that first ball and then I start the second one and before it gets down I start the third one. So I have boom, boom, boom. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. And I do that over and over and over. Over and over and over. Where I try to catch where I'm catching. So I have two balls and so I start this piece start in my left hand. As I do that, now I'll have two on my right hand. As I do it again, I'll have two on my left hand. Again, lost my focus again. So that's what that final step looks like, and, and it is, it's, it's really tough. It's adding a lot to the other steps, but it's kind of putting them together. So just like that, over and over and over until you've mastered it, so you can do it a hundred times. So over and over and over. And this is how I learned to juggle, is I learned, I, Someone told me the basic steps, and I just worked on each one a little bit at a time. So I would watch my Saturday morning cartoons, and I remember spending like four or five hours just doing this over and over and over until I got the hang of it. Um, and then once you get the hang of it, then everything else starts to kind of go together. So now for our, our final performance of juggling, we're going to put all five of those steps together. Because I'm going to do everything I did. I'm going to throw up. I'm, I'm going to throw the ball up. I'm going to catch it in the other hand. I'm going to, but I'm going to keep it going. So it will look like this. And you can see I can still talk while I'm juggling, but I have to really focus on those balls and catching them. But notice none of them are going very high. If I threw one way high and then threw another one way low, it's going to, they're not going to land at the, the time I need them to. So you have to keep them about the same height. Uh, and then see, I don't have to, if I were standing, I may have to go all over the place. But because I'm sitting, I have to focus a little bit more. So it looks like that is what juggling looks like. If you become good and accomplished at juggling three balls like that, you can challenge yourself. So one way you can challenge yourself is you could add a fourth ball if you wanted to. Uh, so I could grab another tennis ball and I could challenge myself to try to juggle four balls. I'll tell you, I've never took, taken this step myself, so I can't juggle four balls. I'll try real quick. You're going to see I'm going to fail pretty badly. Yeah, I can't, I can't do four balls. I could if I worked at it and tried it, but I haven't done that. Instead, how I've challenged myself is to the three balls that you have, 
um, is, uh, and you could, it, it, they're all the same weight, which makes it easy. So what I do sometimes is I'll introduce another object that is not the same weight. So here is a really much lighter and it's flimsy and it's bigger. And so what I have to do is I have to learn how to juggle this back and forth. So I could go like that. And you see, I have to adjust to the weight of the light one over and over and over because it is a different weight than the others. And so it has to be adjusted as a result. I could work in something that's not quite round like this. This is a, a heavy dog. It's heavier than the other ones. So I could throw it like that and I have to get used to the, you know, the way I have to grip it like that. And see, I can't do it consistently, so I would have to work on that over and over and over and over until I get that consistently. I could take something that is not round or ball shaped, like this cube, and I could work that into my, my act. So whereas I'm throwing and having to adjust to the weight, but getting used to it. If you really want to challenge yourself, you could have three different objects, all of different size, weight, whatever, and you put those in there and you try to learn to juggle like that. The last way that you could challenge yourself is uh, you could try to just juggle with one hand, one ball, or two balls. So it looks like this. So I got two balls in this one hand and I can juggle one handed juggle. And it's a little bit different than the way I was doing it before and I'm not as accomplished at it as I am the others, but you can see that you, it takes focus, it takes skill. It's challenging me to try something different. It's challenging me to do it in, um, you know, to, to maintain better focus than I had before. So, you, you know, we, as human beings, we need to learn to challenge ourselves. We need to, if something becomes too easy, then we need to figure out a way to challenge ourselves. So LeBron James, who is the best basketball player in the world, um, continually works on his game to become better. He could simply sit back and say, I'm the best player in the world. I'm not going to get any better. Uh, he goes, I could work on this, or I could work on that, or I could work on this. And so he strives to make himself better. And that's what makes people champions or experts or whatever, um, is that they're willing to challenge themselves. So the question then I'll leave you with is, are you willing to challenge yourself?